So chat to Aparithi with Kumar and the Hilton in Colombo with just two weeks more to go to Christmas with my guest celebrity Brandon Damian Ingram. That's what I am now. <laughs> when did you stop being Korean Almeida's son and get your own identity? <laughs> you let me do it. <laughs> I do, I do, I do. I, I feel like it was a huge chip on my shoulder growing up because it was uh, it was one of the reasons why I never wanted to venture into singing. You know, all the, oh. the comments over the years of why don't you just sing like your mother? I feel like part of that, uh, the need to carve out my own identity, to follow um, what I do as a profession, which is advertising, and to get into acting, which is really my passion, had to do a little bit with that. Um, but I think uh, as a grown man, I can say I have no qualms about being called Corinne Almeida Stan at all. It's something that I, uh, you know, makes me really proud when, when someone says it. But now, Aji has given you your own identity, Brandon the actor. I, th I, I like to think that it existed before RG came along. It took you 35 but, uh, years <laughs> <laughs> to reach that stage. I, on, on film, at least, you know, um, I've written two books. Um, I've been in advertising a long time. Um, I've done a whole bunch of other things, Kumar. I've been on stage for 13 years. I feel like as far as Sri Lanka is concerned, um, I've, I've been around. Um, as far as the world is concerned, maybe just now. Um, and, and, and that's okay. You know, I was thinking this morning, um, just coming over here, the measurement of success, right? Um, a lot of people ask me this question um, about how I deal with the success um, that's happening right now. And I don't think that being in an international film that's in the running for an Oscars makes you successful. I think that one success is measured by the discipline that they maintain in their life, the dedication um, that they have to their craft and all that they do, and the devotion that they have to their relationships. And if you can measure yourself on those three things, then you can arrive at whether or not you are successful. How disciplined, how dedicated, how devoted, to quote your three words, are you? Very. To your craft, in your craft. Very. <laughs> Um, you are structured, is it a day structure? <laughs> it really is. I, I, live my, I live my day in a certain structure and uh, moving through that structure really helps me manage my time really well. It, it helps me manage work at Wonder Man Thompson, um, work uh, that concerns the movie, um, and also my masters that's happening right now and all of my personal relationships um, really well. I don't know how I do it most of the time, but I do think that the structure, the regime, uh, the regiment that I've sort of like, you know, put in place for myself um, helps. It, it really does. Your mother, Corinne, was in her very, very, very early 20s when you were born. And um, she was almost a single parent before you were even one year old. Uh, do you miss a father or a father figure? Have you missed that person in your life? Um, I, I, I think it would be a lie to say that I haven't, of course. Uh, it leaves a huge hole in your life. It took me a really long time to arrive at the place where I realized I had abandonment issues as a result of my father not being there. Um, but I think that um, when, you know, you, you really look at parents um, more holistically uh, for who they are when you grow older. As, as children, it's really difficult uh, to have that point of view. But as you grow older, you see, I mean, at, at my age, they had a teenage son. I don't know what I'd do with one of those <laughs> at this point in my life. <laughs> like really, you know, you, you, you need to put yourself into, into their position, uh, take your age into consideration, take the, the, the local, the cultural context into consideration. Um, and you see that they really did the best that they can. And I think on both ends, my mother realizing that she could do it, um, you know, as, as a She single, worked every night, Nana looked after you. Of course she tough. did. And, and, and I think um, I was raised by some really very powerful women, more powerful than you or me or most men that I know really, uh, my Nana, my Auntie Sharon and my mother. Um, and I think I think both my parents came, came to understand um, what, what they gave me or what they could give me at a very early age and that was great. With my mother it was that she could become this amazing force in my life and do all of this stuff um, by herself with the support of the people that she loved. And for my father it was also realizing that he couldn't and making a very very intelligent choice, uh, a carefully thought out choice to leave when he did uh, because life would have been very diff different for, for all of us. Are you in touch? Occasionally, now and again, yes. Is he proud of his son? I hope so. <laughs> then I should think so. <laughs> yeah.
<laughs> your sexuality uh, how old were you when you actually came to terms with yourself forget the world mm. you yourself um well i think uh that i definitely knew i was different as young as the age of 7 um i struggled with it throughout my teenage years was there bullying of course there was but god's school was how did really really you difficult you were the child you were the child mm. cope with bullying um there was a lot of tears there was a lot of uh, not telling people what was going on because of the shame uh because how do you approach this conversation uh are you even allowed to have this sort of conversation with your elders with your parents um so there was a lot of um i don't want to use the word suffering but that's what it was emotionally mentally Trauma. uh yeah traumatic to go through those things quietly silently not letting let, letting anyone else in so cool. what is it that click inside where you actually said look i am myself um i think it didn't come till till very late in life you know i i moved through uh, a lot of my 20s also i think a better part of my 20s still not coming to terms with the truth um it was it was way into like my late 20s when i was able to have all of the right kinds of conversations with myself really go 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 deep within meditation helped a lot um you know quitting my job and going away to to write that helped a lot when i had a lot of time to spend with myself i really came to terms with who i was on the inside um and realized that acceptance is something that you uh, shouldn't be expecting from the world around you it's something that you have to give to yourself first and when i embraced myself fully then it really didn't matter who whoever else did it or not you know because i wasn't looking for anyone's blessing to be who i was Um, what about mother what about grandmother uh, the same with them i wasn't looking for their blessing to be who i was you were not i wasn't um and when i shared the information with them uh, with my family it, i i i i said it i said it to them as such you know i'm not looking for your approval if you give it that would make me that much happier because this is who i am it's it's not about whether you approve or not this is simply who i am um and it would be happy if i have your blessing um but life is not going to change now from this point onwards uh, on this subject whether you say yes or no i'm good with it or not um and you know to 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 my uh, to their great credit actually how 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 open and embracing um and delicate they were uh, about it all you know i remember 31st uh, night that year i was able to sit at a round table uh, with a lot of my family and there was a girl that had been hitting on me for for most of the night and my aunts had observed this and they were like you know bullying me about it um <laughs> and i said out loud at that table does anyone want to tell her that she's barking up the wrong tree and everyone oh. just burst out <laughs> laughing you know and i thought this is fantastic to have acceptance yeah to have my aunts call up and say if you're um you know seeing anyone right now uh please bring, bring him, him over along. bring uh, him along yes. bring him bring him over we we we'd like to meet him uh come over for a meal i remember one of my grand aunts in particular when i broke the news to her uh when she said where's your girlfriend and i was like auntie you know you you really should be asking me about a boyfriend now and then she leaned in close and she said darling is he burger <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> like least, that, that's all you know just like give, give me give me something as long as <laughs> it's, burger, burger. it's okay um i think i think family <laughs> family really is remarkable and 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 a beautiful thing and we really need to give them also the uh the chance to grow with us to to be accepting with us is there going to be a part 2 to the fairy dance um, if you can lay a book uh, hands on this book his first book a beautiful story it's traumatic uh it's about child abuse it's out of print i'm told yeah uh but that was so 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 it, it moved me so much um there isn't really because i think with both my books uh the fairy dance and living their lie i wrote them at a time in my life that was very different to to where i am now um i cringe sometimes when i look at them but i know that they meant a great deal to me to others who read it at the time um but that was that time and it is done for the past 6 years i have been working on a dark fantasy epic um which is about prehistoric sri lanka and i really you know want to take all of the the time and put the right kind of energy into finishing it so it's not going to come out anytime soon because i'm very busy right now um but it's that's that's my next project that's where my heart is and that's that's what it's going to be uh brandon you've 
lived in in Colombo for the past 35 years. Uh, are you now in a situation where people who once moved away from you for various reasons, best known to them and to you, uh, <laughs> I uh, like uh, to think that people haven't moved now, away from me like that. Now, now want to be your friend because you're, you know, you might make it to the Oscars, you might win an award. You know, you 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 you're there. Larger than life. You know, people I, gravitating towards you now. I think that's very interesting, Kumar, that you say that because uh, I think that's very reflective of the generation you come from. You said that um, earlier. Yes. Yeah, and I and, and I think that it's very different um, in in the generation I come from. I mean, we we don't look at people based on status or class or uh, what their accomplishments are. I'd like to think that relationships in our generation are far more authentic. Um, than they have been before. And I think that the generation before us is also learning through those examples. Um, I really haven't had time for people to cozy up to me because I've mostly been at home on a Microsoft Teams meeting, on a Zoom call, on a phone call, um, in an office meeting, um, doing some interview somewhere. Um, you know, but I, I, I feel like I know the people um, who are closest to my heart and I cherish them dearly. And I'm, I'm at a point in my life when I have a close circle of people and, and that's good enough for me. So yeah. Describe your aunt Sharon in one word. Bombastic. <laughs> Noeline, your grandmother, Nana. I don't think I can describe her in one word. Like force of nature. You need all three of those words to describe her. <laughs> your mother, Corinne Almeida. Phenomenal. So Christmas is in exactly uh, two weeks from today. You might have written to Santa Claus. <laughs> Uh, what have you asked him to bring you, apart from the Oscar? <laughs> <laughs> I really haven't asked for that, you know, I haven't asked for any of these things. Uh, and the fact that they've come is just a reflection of how bountiful this universe is that just keeps on giving and keeps us... Um, I, I, I don't know, it's just like, I, I, I haven't asked for any of this. And I feel so blessed and so lucky um, that all of this is happening. Um, Christmas is going to be different this year, as we all know. Um, and I think it's going to be interesting to see how we celebrate, uh, given all that's going on with the situation uh, concerning the pandemic, etc. So um, let's see what happens. You know, my mother's definitely going to bake like five cakes. That much I know. Um, I might have a piece. <laughs> <laughs> she hates it when she, she bakes and I don't eat. So thank you very much, Brandon, for being a guest on my show. Great thank pleasure you. talking to you and getting to know you better, actually. Thank you, uh, pleasure again. Uh, we're both from the same school, so double pleasure, both Wesleyites. Double uh, blue. Double blue, <laughs> yes. So wish you and Corinne and your partner, your grandmother, the entire family, all the very best for Christmas and the New Year. Stay safe thank and stay blessed. You. Thank you. And thank you, Pauls. <laughs> we meet you again next week. That is a week to go to Christmas with a fabulous couple as guests on the show. And then, of course, our Christmas special. So enjoy the fun, everybody. Stay safe, all of you. With this, I say, come on. Cheers.